Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745, and we are playing Hearts of Iron 3's Black Ice 11.2, and we're playing as the USA, which is giving me a chance to talk about a lot of different things. I hope it's interesting. Okay, direct fire unit command and control. Let's we'll just get that out of the way. If you're new here, please subscribe. Uh, everyone can hit that like button. Okay, uh, that is down here. Okay, 37. We're going to shift it from a 37 to a 1918 technology. Okay, saw this just as the ending of the last episode. Hershey, Pennsylvania chocolate workers strike. On the evening of April 6, 1937, farmers... Um, Oh, anti-union, there's supposed to be a, maybe a dash there. Anti-union, um, Hershey employees and members of various patriotic groups march in nearby Pen um, Palmyra, Pennsylvania. The union, they argued, not only dishonored the heroic Hershey, it was an outright un-American. On April 7th, still without resolution, the, the loyal workers and local farmers held a parade downtown to show their support for Hershey. That morning, Hershey farmers and loyal workers set an ultimatum to the strikers. Evacuate by 12 noon or suffer the consequences. Just before 1 p.m., union representatives met with the company president and agreed to end the strike. The anti-union crowd of 30, however, had already gathered at the factory with baseball bats, pitchforks, and lead pipes. After exchanging taunts and insults with the strikers, the crowd began to storm the plant, and the fleeing workers fled through the gauntlet of blows. Okay, that's what's that's going on in the photo there. When the fighting was over, 25 striking workers had been soundly beaten, some taken to the local hospital to be treated for their injuries. 18 regiments rise up and fill out the fucking shit. I mean, I like the I like the informative nature of the of um, the event, and I. Um, you know, I like like historically based stuff going on here, but 18 regiments revolt in Philadelphia. Well, Pe Hershey, Pennsylvania. Um, there is actually a place, Hershey, Pennsylvania. It is a city, not just a um, a, f a factory, and it and it is not the factory isn't named after Hershey. Hershey is named after the factory. This is a place, um, and I'm not exactly sure what how it was going in 1937. This is a factory town, in which the um, the factory, and you can see these going back. Well, I guess maybe in ways you can see it going back to the Middle Ages, but in the sort of modern sense, you can see them going back to like Pullman. Um, that was a railway car company and hotel. Um, railway Hotel Company, um, Pullman. Um, they manufactured railway cars, but also ran them as a moving uh, hotel. Pullman often said he had the world's largest hotel, ho ha having the most overnight guests of any hotel chain because people would sleep on his railway cars. Um, when he built his, I think it's um, outside of Chicago, Pullman's um, factory. Um, when he built his factory, he also built, because he built outside of Chicago, and this is in the days before automobiles and whatnot, he built a town for the for the workers to live in. And the, um, the, the stores and other buildings, you know, other um, commercial type buildings in the town were owned by Pullman, meaning it's, it's a factory town. And that is similar to what, what was going on in Hershey, Pennsylvania, in that um, the factory, you, you want to, instead of being, instead of having labor and going in central Philadelphia and having to build your factory near the labor and all of the expense, because you can see, you know, and this is urban. Philadelphia here, I presume. I don't know the photograph from Airborne, but I'm presuming it's Philadelphia at the time. Um, it's going to be expensive land to build a factory. So if you build it outside of 
Philadelphia. You can get the land a lot cheaper, but you need to also have labor. And even with, um, even to this day, having with modern transportation systems, whether rail systems or automobiles or whatever, you know, drive time to work or, you know, waiting on the train or whatever takes a long time. So you build, can be built cheap and crummy housing or can just be built cheap housing in the sense that the land itself is cheap and you can be building quality housing. And some of these factory towns, and I specifically don't know about Hershey, um, but some of these companies, they actually do a very good job because especially in the 19th century when they're trying to build, they're trying to attract workers, meaning there is not a, um, an overabundance of workers. And with some of these industries, the, the workers become skilled workers, so you want to keep them there um, and not have them go off to other things. So you're actually trying to build nice. Now, this does open up to um, abuse. It very much does. Um, you will have situations in which Again, I don't know specifically on Hershey's. Hello, Eric. Very good. Um, have you ever thought about playing historical Total War games? Been playing Troy. Oh, um, well, I have a series um, Total War Napoleon on the channel, Ringo the Dingo, and um, which I've almost completed. It's though it's very old, and I have a, um, I think. Total War Rome 2 um, modded game that ended in a bug that I couldn't get past that was crashing the situation. So it, it ended because of that. So I do have two Total War series up there. One is uh, Rome 2 and the other is Napoleon. Um, open to playing some more of some of those sometimes. But yes, I have done uh, those as well. So again, I don't know the Hershey situation, but you can have things like the um, the situation in which the workers pay rent for their housing to the company. The companies like this because it gets its money back, but the rent might not be very cheap. The um, and the local stores may overprice goods, whether it's clothing, cloth, you know, because back in um, my grandmother, one of, one of my, well, both my grandmothers love to, well, yeah, both my grandmothers love to sew things. One of my grandmothers very much, um, my father talks about how um, clothing, whatnot, that she made for him, um, made a lot of the family's clothing. Um, not not just because she liked to sew, but because cheaper, you know, so getting the cloth. It's, you know, I'm talking like about men's shirts in, in the 1950s or whatever, making home making those instead of buying them at the store. You know, the idea with a collar and a button down or, you know, button front shirt kind of thing. She was making those um, well after World War II. Um, so a lot of people would just buy cloth and make clothing and not just um, buy clothing. especially non-formal clothing, uh, including things like trousers and jackets um, would make that stuff. So selling cloth in these stores and sell, selling all the goods of a home to the workers at an inflated price. But with one thing to get the workers to buy them, they would often, because, hey, new workers showing up. Yes, great, you got a job here. We'll loan you the money to buy. So you become indebted to the factory. You know, and it's maybe not necessarily outrageous price. Not, you know, sometimes I think they were, but sometimes they're not necessarily outrageous prices for the fact for the goods, but they're inflated prices. Some of it is, you know, hey, instead of getting it this, you know, central um, uh, distribution hub, you're getting it out in the countryside, which costs some money to get it out there. Yeah. So, you know, um, ease, you know, or e ease of getting the stuff for the workers, but the difficulty in transportation increased costs. So some of it is, is natural and reasonable. Some of it is exploitation. And so instead of just your normal profit margin going back into the company's coffers, 
they overinflate it. So you get workers that are in essence indebted. And so they they never get ahead. I don't want to use the S word because they weren't s slaves, but they were, you know, they're indebted to the factory. They're making okay money compared to other parts of the, you know, economy, but they pay, they're indebted to the factory, they pay their rent to the factory, they, they buy the stuff from the factory, and because they don't have any money to go buy anywhere else eventually, because their paycheck just goes into pays, pays their debt. So, um, but the factory is always willing to, within, within a, payback scope willing to lend them more money oh well you, you know oh well hey yeah you got your paycheck oh wait a minute your paycheck is zero because you owed us this money oh well we'll loan you the money for the food and the whatever this month because they know they're going to get it back through the um you know through their system so these people become indebted um to the system and it it, it does open up for um for abuse it really does and I, I don't know the how often it was abused versus not, but it was. Um, now, why were there so many you know farmers? They want to sell their products to Hershey. Um, a lot of workers probably uh, that supported here probably because this wasn't an abusive situation. Either the factory town Hershey, Pennsylvania, or um, the pay for working in at Hershey's probably was a decent pay. Maybe not great, but decent pay. But remember, we're in the middle of the depression. And if you shut down the, the, the chocolate factory, um, yeah, it may go, may go out of business or may just shut down. It may not go out of business in the sense they may just shut it down for a year or two because they got enough money. Um, and these people got to go find jobs in a market in which there just aren't a lot of jobs. So that's why um, they'll be loyal, the workers and farmers will be loyal to the company, um, enough of them, because they know their situation is better than what their situation outside of it would be. Uh, what's Eric and Arna been saying? Uh, where's, okay, I sent it to you in the mail a few days ago. Okay, they're talking about a sp spaghetti. Okay, Marine HQ's advance. Nice. Let's let's do Mountain HQs. Uprising Philadelphia. Okay, we will do this. Yes, we'll take a few HQs. Okay, we've won the Battle of Philadelphia. Again, I think all these things are bullshit. They're not really helping the game. I mean, I, if you wanted to, because again, revolt risk can affect, because we can see here, let's, 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 um, let's find here where we have, um, some resources that are in, more revolting areas. Oh, uh, well. Let's look at a resource map. Okay. Yeah, here. This works. We can see here revolt risk down 10%. See, an effect like this, which um, I will take revolt risk. Now, if you get enough revolt risk, you may get a revolt. But I would see a, a modifier out here that means that you have less, um, you know, in a particular region, less industrial productivity as being acceptable, maybe a bit overdone in, in cases, but being acceptable where to me this, all these revolts are just not correct. I'm going to move this up here. And I'm going to grab a Ricola and I'll be back. Didn't Hership come out of retirement to help set up um, MREs for the U.S. government? I don't know. Um, 
I'll t let, let me, I'm going to be right back. I know I'm interrupting a live stream, or even the recording. I'll be right back. And I do have a little bit to say, and I don't know entirely about some of that um, going on. But um, hold that thought. I'll be right back. Okay, almost back here. Um, okay, Hershey. Um, I'm not sure about Hershey, the person, the main guy who's doing all of this. Um, if he did. Now, the American food industry, and if you... Hello, Lawless. Good to have you here. Um, steps up for what, if you, you, you said MREs, but if you're thinking like C rations, which is the combat ration for World War II. They, a lot of companies step up and really work to provide food, not necessarily free, but at, at very low cost, packaged for those products for the government. I do know with Hershey, they specifically work with the government to make a formula for Hershey's chocolate that won't melt because they are knowing that they're going to be deploying troops in this part of the world and in this part of the world that is hot and you don't want to have and you do include like chocolate bars in the sea rations because chocolate and the sugar gives a lot of energy so it is good for a short bursts of energy so it's good for soldiers food and so they make a version i'm not sure how different it is from the standard version but that won't melt um in these environments because you don't want to get a, a box and then open up the wrappers and all there is is just melted stuff in it you you need to be able to have it solid and i do um m&ms i believe are also packaged in some of them as uh, maybe that's post-war i'm not sure because it, it's sort of candy coating keeps it from melting um and i don't know if this mod has anything about coca-cola coca-cola gives a lot a free coca-cola to to the to the military um and they set up they set up a program to do so and their their motivation for that as part of it is that they want to set up 
bottling plants at, around parts of the world so that they're not bottling Coca-Cola here in the U.S. and shipping it across the world, which of course would take up a lot more because there's a lot of it is just water inside of the, the bottle. So instead of shipping water around the world, they want to ship just the syrup around the world and have it locally bottled into Coca-Cola bottles so that when the war is over, I don't know if there is one in Egypt, but theoretically there could be one in Egypt, uh, a Coca-Cola plant in Egypt that's selling Coca-Cola when the war is over, you know, so that they're setting up these bottling plants at different part, different places around the world to locally, man, to locally, you know, put the, the syrup in or whatever, you know, I don't know the process, then you know, put in the carbonation and then, you know, in with whatever water and seal it up. And so it's, it's doing that kind of thing. Yeah, no, I was just, I was just going to get a, a Ricola because of my talking a lot here. So I'm back, Lalas. Lalas has been watching this channel for years now. And so he, I'm always glad when I see him around because I know people come and go and I'm glad to have somebody who's still finds me interesting. Okay. Well, we're still just in 37. And I think if we start most of the, get these mostly in production in 39, we will be doing okay. So let's click over to here. Hershey prospered because he had sugar plantations in Cuba, so it wasn't affected by wartime sugar rationing. Um, well, let me tell you something about that. Um, I don't know specifically about, I mean, yeah, I know that they um, ration sugar, but you got to understand, and I don't know how much um, Hershey because you got to, you got to, Ringo, Ringo, you got to understand that there's two elements here. Um, we're not talking about Britain who has to import things like sugar. The U.S. has, modern day, has a lot of protective tariffs against importing sugar to protect a small number, particularly in Florida and out in Hawaii, sugar manufacturers. Sugar is not really a... Um, a scarcity issue here in America too much. There was some sugar rationing for sure. But what you have um, set up here is a situation that um, if you're making food like Hershey's for the army, you're not subject to the rationing because that's where it's supposed to go. So it, this, you know, once the war gets going and all this stuff gets worked on, you, it, it's, it's a government control, it's a command, it becomes a, a, in very, very many ways, a command economy. So, um, yeah, it, it's real, and I don't know the details, so I'm not going to try to explain too much, but, I do know that if you're you're making Coca-Cola, which has sugar in it, and in you, in, the, in the syrup, because you you can you can make vats of of the sh um, you know a, 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 like a 55 gallon drum of of, of um, uh, syrup might make um, 500 gallons instead of 55 gallons or 5,000 gallons. I don't know of the actual drinkable product you know it's it's just it's a concentrate and there'll be sugar in that and if it's going for the you know soldiers military the navy whatever use that would not affect his rationing quotas to other things so it's um that also didn't germany have a coca-cola plant or didn't have a co that was cut off it yeah that that's exactly how fanta comes about it gets cut off from because Coca-Cola is trying to um, control, and I don't, again, and I'm sure it changes from the 1930s to 1970s to modern day, but, you know, they're trying to control the, the, the formula and um, one for, you know, industrial, um, you know, secrets, you know, um, 
And so, you know, they try to control, you know, the exact formula of what these products are. And this is, I use the term, and what it really, they, they talk about it, even though today most, well, it's a, either plastic bottles or, or, you know, soda cans. It's a bottling company. And so, the, yes, they make the concentrate somewhere, often in just one or two locations, and then transport that around the world to different bottling places. And gets turned into, or sell the concentrate in like fountain drinks, you know, if you like, um, you know, you, you have a, uh, you go into a fast food restaurant and you put your, your cup there, they just put some of the syrup into the machine and the machine um, carbonizes some, put in some water at the right mixture rate and um, carbonizes it. Um, and cools it and then gives it out to you um, there. So e either you're, you're bottling it or you're selling the concentrate to two places. And yes, Fanta is um, the German alternative made with local, um, something that didn't, didn't need import goods to make the flavoring and um, more sugar come in okay we're looking at trying to give out some more charleston yeah we'll give charleston a couple of factories norfolk virginia major major um shipyard production again like i said earlier and there are a few episodes ago or at the beginning of the stream if you weren't here talked about it it really may not matter for the u.s where your ICs go because by the time somebody's properly invading of america america's really lost it lost the war by then it doesn't matter where they knock it out but this this norfolk shipping shipyard was a massive like dock facility so it should have ICs. might not really matter because yeah newport news is also another well, they have Williamsburg there, which is sort of up here. Um, another major shipping area building. All along this coast, there's um, fair amounts of large and small scale ship production. Baltimore? Yeah, Baltimore has industry, so let's. I mean, you gotta know, tell me that city doesn't have a lot of industry going on in it. Boston, I think. Oh, no, I haven't dumped any in Boston, so let's dump some in Boston. Okay. Mm -hmm. Get most of it back in. After the local blitz truck manufacturers, would they offshoot it? Well, well, Opal Blitz was a, a fully owned, a wholly owned subsidiary of General Motors. It just kept into production. I mean, it, it didn't require anything from the U.S. And Ford Motor Company also had a, a factory in Berlin and a major factory in Cologne. Um, now, the, now, the Germans did not nationalize Opal or Ford Motor Company. Um, if there were any American um, managers and employees, they were either interred or, or sent away. And the, but the German staff continued to run the factories. Um, like I said, the Germans did not nationalize them. They paid for every single tr truck or any other thing that was made out of those plants. They paid them money, put it in the bank for them, for um, Ford or GM after the war. Now, after the war... Reichsmarks really didn't have any value. So big bank account of valueless money they ended up. So basically um, GM and Ford didn't make any real money out of it. They, oh, and the factories, had, uh, don't know how bad. I, I, I know I, I've seen photos of some of the bomb damage for the Cologne um, factory for, for Ford Motor Company. I don't know about Opal Blitz, how badly it was bombed or not. But yeah, they ended up with a maybe semi-working factories after the war, but they really didn't make any money, profit out of the war. Um, no. 
road networks advance. Okay, good. Am I doing all of these? Okay. Um, um, I know we're going to move this up to agricultural. So, yeah, they weren't profiting by their and, and in any real aspect they didn't profit from from um supplying america's enemies with trucks once at least once the war gets going um but yeah they were making them for for the germans and the german staff you know they were all german so so they were like yeah of course we're at war so hooray you know whatever because it was primarily a We'll do like cruiser class thing, but yeah. So don't think of them as somehow like betraying America or profiting from from killing Americans. Yeah, Reichsmarks were worth nothing when the war was over. Armor unit training. This gives people getting there get ideas in their heads and staying around yeah profiteering from America's enemies you know Ford Motor Company should be held accountable what a half wrecked factory that was limping along in production after the war uh, that's their profit yeah not not so much We're going to combine arms, which we're going to want that continue. Fast battleship design upgrade. Okay. Um, not used to doing too much of the. That was that one. Good. Americans like fast ships. Well, we could do... I don't know what battle cruisers... Well, we might make some battle cruisers. I don't know. Artillery barrel and ammunition advance. Yeah, let's do industry. Get that pushed up. Where are unit training? Okay. Um, yeah, 38. Let's move this over to here. Industrial zone and bombing site advance. Maybe I'm okay. We'll come back to that probably sometime soon. Mm -hmm. No, it's only April, but well, now let's let's make sure we get some of these like well done. Looking back, I think it's funny how the U.S. turned down the. Christie suspension system and the Russians used it to make the BT series and the T-34 series. Yeah, and the British used some Christie um, uh, style suspensions on some of their vehicles too. Um, yeah, but from everything I can tell, and, I, and, and the army bureaucracy, shall we say, even though the army's small, was probably hard to work with. But Christie was a pain in the ass. I think that is is clear. Um, so I don't know enough mechanically to go. Oh, the Shermans would have been better had they had the Christie system or something. I don't, you know, know and know enough to go if that would be the case or not. Because the Shermans Sherman suspension systems. No, it, no, the BT series. What BT the BT. Um, BT three or whatever was ba you know that whole BT three BT five BT sevens those were Christie tanks the T thirty fours were enough because if you look at the BTs and Christies you just see that they're sort of beefed up Christies and Christie was just proof of concept 
you know, prototypes, not like how thick should the armor be or how big the gun should be. It just does this whole system, you know, transmission, drive, layout, and um, thing work. And so the BT three, the BT threes were very much just a, a Christie copy, and the the fives and the sevens were just upgrading that. The T thirty fours takes the sort of concepts, re redesigns it a lot, so it's not just a Christie, but it's still, like you say, the Christie um, legacy is is there very much so. Um, okay, artillery unit command and control. These command and control things, yeah, okay, 36, we'll let that continue, and fuselage aerodynamics. We're not going to be fighting any wars right now, so we don't really need the command and control as much as we either want to deal with things like this, which is probably what I'm going to do next, or uh, we, well, we're going to do these eventually here, but we don't really need more resources. We might at some point. Um, Radar, yeah, we'll want to get to those, but I think it's more important to get some of these things done sooner rather than later now for us. I think it exports, okay, yeah, money. Um, no, we don't need to trade with her. Nothing is going, we're not going to get anything out of around the and I don't even need money. You know, I, you see, I don't need money in this game here, integrated. Um, oh, superior firepower. That's right, I'm not used to. Um, okay, 38. Okay, well, well, we can shift it over to mobile defense. It's just more efficient if we're going to be doing this. Ah, very big, sir. I'm a slow response, but I'm just catching up on the stream. Counter espionage will help raise your organization, which your popularity is dependent upon. Okay, very good. Um, like I say, we I increased it to level two here. I'm still keeping ruling party support at level three, and then national unity. We have three counter and two in party popularity. Okay, so you think it's that should be okay? Well. Let's just, okay, so we are currently at 31%. So let's, well, let's try that. Okay, we can do that. We'll go to, there we go, to ruling party support and counter espionage. We'll see how that works out. No, I, good, good, good info there. Here. Okay, standoff tactics. Make a nice offensive. Wing aerodynamics. And so here, let's move this up to. Yes, you can have crude money or crude oil for money. Okay, airport capabilities. We print stolen. Hopefully, it's a friendly nation. Okay, network. We'll come back to these. Um, but I sort of want to get through some of these here. Broadcasting and events and combined arms defense that I think is down here um yes back to some of that um yeah we'll get this done the Shermans were decent tanks for 1941 they weren't the best at anything well, yeah, um, Ringo, when you think, at least when I think of Pank, I think of a Sherman. I mean, to this day, it's a Sherman. 
Uh, now, when I think of Panzer, I'll think of like a Panzer IV or something like that. But if you just say tank, it is the the ba it is balance of firepower, armor, mobility. Those are the three main elements of of balancing everything, and it's just laid out so well. And and it, go, and, it and it functions well through the end of the war because you got the jumbo with thicker armor, and then you got the the seventy six millimeter Sherman, and then you get but a seventy six and a jumbo hull. So you know you're you're dealing with pretty good armor. You know, it gets upgraded over time. The engines get up. Unlike unlike the Panzer IVs and whatnot, the engines get upgraded in a Sherman um, over time. So it it is not a static design. You know, the 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 Sherman of what late forty one, early forty two. You know, right? I'm not exactly sure when the Shermans come in. Um, uh, you know, onto the battlefield in any numbers. First, of course, there's the Grants and the Lees, but um, you know, by the, the the early Sherman, yeah, is not the late war Sherman. The Ameri the, the the Americans, the Americans sent home hundreds, like like eight hundred Shermans, um, because they get newer Shermans. They send them home. They you know, can you imagine Germany going, yeah. These 400 Panzers, yeah, we don't need them anymore. We'll just send them home. We got so many tanks on the Russian front. We'll just send these these tanks home. We don't want them anymore. They literally send it's like 800 Shermans home to America. So they don't want them anymore. The bunch of them do get upgrade or do get go through a refit process and get sent to a Commonwealth units in. Um, Asia, you know, the Asia theater, you know, whether it's India or Australia or wherever, because they're still useful enough there, um, or you know, more than useful there. But yeah, the Americans, they're just, yeah, they're, you know, too old tanks. They've been run too long. They're too out of date, you know, got better armor. Yeah, we'll just send home like 800 Shermans or something. These are undestroyed, undamaged. Just send them home because we got new tanks to use. Just, just think the Germans' mind would be blown. Like, yeah, we're just going to, you know, send them home. We don't need them. And that's that's the American. When you, you have to look at the American um, productivity levels. We'll cancel that and move it over down to there to get our mountain unit training up. Sherman. So yeah, it's the Shermans were great. I'm not saying that they're, you know, like I don't know whether. Oh uh, no, we still need our tungsten. We're not going to give up all of our tungsten seaport capabilities, um, even to Britain right now. We may come back to those very soon, but I want to get some of these others. I think will help me sooner rather than later. Um, I don't need these so i'm not going to go early on any of these this might be but we could do supplies which would just mean less ic's producing supplies so um let's do ammunition production first and sonar detection equipment advance that would be under here okay um no it's under submarines Okay, and it's grayed out. All right. Um, yeah, let's do torpedoes. Let's continue to push up on those. Israel used them into the 70s. The last Shermans were phased out of service in 2003 in South America. I forgot. Yeah, now Israel's Shermans were not, you know, they were late war Shermans. Um, Yugoslavia had Shermans in its um, arsenal until, as reserve tanks, yes, but had... Um, until the breakup of Yugoslavia, they had Shermans. Some of them famously um, driven around in the movie. Um, uh, um, oh man, um, the Clint Eastwood, Tully Savalas, Donald Sutherland movie. I always blank on things. I don't know why I've always done this. Um, um, Kelly's Heroes, Kelly's Heroes, great movie. If you haven't seen it, I know some of you younger people haven't. Great movie. It was shot in Yugoslavia. And they used Yugoslavia's Shermans um, as part of the thing. Okay, yes, we will give you rare materials, kill off more of your effective leaders. Sure, Soviet Union tactical and operational commands. When you fear your own army more than you fear possible invaders. 
Core headquarters, yes, we'll get that going. Okay, airport level, seaport level, railway level. Okay, and we can also come over here, and that's going to cost us 10,000 monies, and we have 11,600, so we'll end up with 1,600 after this to keep going to pay for whatever ridiculous thing they think I need to pay for in this game. Yes, you can have crude Poland. I think that was Poland or was it Indonesia? Same basic flag. Okay, yes, just all the rail and seaport improvements. Okay, cool. Oh, wow. Well, hmm, okay. Okay, we're in our bad effects from whatever union strike thingy looks like it's gone, gone down. Okay, I'm still not doing the upgrades. Let's push us back into our carriers. We don't need them now. We're not going to war with anybody because I know the future. Yes, I know the future. You know, the future of 1930, whatever, yes. Um, we want to expand our factories into new additional locations, not just um, Dover. Where he wants me to build up Kentucky's industry so they're not stuck in a third world state. Let's start the Higgins plant being produced. Higgins boats were produced down here. He did a very, including other landing craft and other things than the Higgins, famous Higgins boats. As we get more industry, we'll expand to more industry. Let's get the stuff that's partially produced up to the top. Yeah. Patents carried on the legacy, I think. Um, they weren't great at anything, but neither did they did well at everything. Yeah. Um, the patents, you're, yeah, the M48 and whatnot. Yeah, they were decent tanks, I would say. Um, Naval HQs, sure. Yes, let's think we'll be, yeah, let's come sit that a while. Hindenburg disaster, Lake Hurst Naval Air Station. Yeah, don't fly. Don't fly uh, flying bombs in um, electrical storms. That would be my uh, best information. Let's just do that. On units, just thinking there's so much. I, I'm an old movie fan. Well, we don't need to continue that. That's not a good one. Let's shift that and. Yeah, we can do some. Um, yeah. And whatnot. So I find it interesting, but I've got a lot of stuff to make, you know, talk about a lot of the cultural things happening going on and not just 
union problems. Okay. Range finding equipment. I think that's maybe one of them. Yeah. Okay. We'll see about upgrading that soon. Probably not right away. Recon unit coordination. That's down here. Again, let's, we'll just shift that over to here. Get that gun. Armored car designs. Yeah. Well, I'd rather do some of these things that unlock other things. You know, I'm whipping the thing around fast. Um, before I would rather do an end result early that I'm not going to use, you know, in combat for some time. Yeah, I think we're going to come back over here. We'll, we'll get on seaport capabilities and airport just because it'll take longer to research. Might as well get them started earlier. Party rally, yes. Um, realistically, I know this is happening here, but realistically this happens really only once every four years in America. Um, and it would be the, the um, nominating conventions for the two major parties, the Democrats and the Republicans, they'll hold what would be a, a party rally. Um, and they still do it. Maybe not quite on the scale of you know, actual numbers of participants, but in some ways, um, getting onto the, oh, no, I want to do not, no trade, um, on this, on the idea of a Nuremberg party rally, you know, that the Nazis would do every year, um, you know, but a big hooray for the party kind of thing. Um, but that's like I say, every four years in American politics, capital ship, secondary weapons. So that would that be here. No, that would probably be over here. Okay, raid out. All right, what do we want to push on here? Anything early or catch up? Or, um, okay, we can do, let's do torpedo protection. Keep the ships from being sunk from torpedoes. You're okay, you're caught up, Greg. Could you gone through quickly? Probably a lot of getting past some of my rants. Play it many times, but I still haven't perfected it, so I'm interested in seeing how you. Well, I've never played it before, Greg. Uh, this is the first time I've played the United States in Hearts of Iron 3. Um, so I am not a. Never, like I say, never played it before. Never gotten this. Far. I mean, I've turned it on a couple of times and played a little bit into 1936, uh, a time or two, but not played like this. So, any input, Greg, either now or um, if you watch some of the episodes, if you don't catch it live, please, please give me hints, tips. Love to learn, and I hope everyone else will will learn from things. The incident arose. Uh, okay, well, Memorial Day Massacre of 1937, the Little Steel Strike. Okay. The incident rose after the United States Steel signed a um, union contract, but smaller steel manufacturers called Little Steel, including Republic Steel, refused to do so. In protest, steel workers organized in committee, SWOC of the Congress of Industrial Organization, CIO, called a strike. The, on Memorial Day, hundreds of sympathizers gathered at Sam's Place headquarters of the SWOC. As the crowd marched across the prairie towards the Republic Steel Mill, a line of Chicago policemen blocked their path. When the foremost protesters argued their right to continue, a tree branch was tossed at the police lines and the police fired on the crowd as the crowd fled. Police bullets killed 10 people and injured 30. Nine people were permanently disabled. And another um, 28 had serious head injuries from police clubbing. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm sorry that people lost their lives. I'm presuming this is a photo from the incident. Now, I, I say like I'm presuming there's a photo from an incident. When I make a thumbnail for my videos, I look at it as a book cover. Book cover is meant to sell the book. So I very well may make a thumbnail that, you know, just has a cool picture on it. 
when I make an event image, I am very scrupulous about, I will not use colorized images unless I know that that image was colorized at the time period. If it's something they would have seen, you know, because there was colorization, not just color film, but they would hand tint um, something and then make mass print runs uh, based off the hand tinting. They would colorize things back then. So unless it was a period colorization, I will not use it. I will use modern color photographs of a historical, like a police officer, you know, like a period police officer's cap, a modern, photo, you know, photograph of a period, and I'll like put it in the corner or something like that. Or I will use sort of like if there's a, a period a CIO or something logo, I may, you know, a sort of modern computer graphics version of it may stick that up in the corner. You'll see all that stuff in Third Rec events. But I very much with my images, I don't just get, and I'm presuming, like I say, I presume this is, um, uh, a photograph from the event as opposed to just a a striking photo you know photograph with strikers and police and stuff um i would be very very good and what before i continue what is ringo saying wouldn't it be ironic if joseph mangula became a answer oh dennis oh joseph mangula um into a genus or army medic that fought in the falklands against the brits Okay, yeah. Only advice I would give you right now is to accept some more of those strategic resource trade. You're really going to need the money. Okay, well, I will accept some more. Um, I've mostly been trying to... Ex oh, no, that's not the one I want. Um, this. I'm trying to accept ones with nations that I care about and ones where I'll keep at least um, one level of surplus. But I will keep that in mind. Okay, um, so I'm presuming this is a correct period um, photo of the event, taken obviously from the police side of lines. Um, I don't know how much you can tell from this photograph, but if you're looking at, if, the, if these is correct, these are police in um, standard uniforms, not in some sort of riot, you know, with riot shields and helmets. So they're, and yeah, they have nightclubs as they, they mentioned. Um, but I'll tell you what, the, po the police sound like from, from this description, again, I'm only going from this description, the protesters, um, there are, okay. So, um, the crowd marched across the prairie towards Republic steel mill, a line of Chicago policemen blocked their path. So the Chicago policemen thought that these people might come and do damage to Republic Steel or, Ill or illegally trespass on Republic Steel and they set up a line to block them. Then they were attacked with a tree branch, don't know how big that was, was tossed, big enough to be tossed, but, but more than probably a twig, more than some of these little small trees or something here, um, was um, tossed at the police lines and the police fired on the crowd. Well, the police were probably heavily outnumbered. And if you've got a mob, a mob is not a rational group of people. A mob is a weird psychosis thing that you get mob mentalities. You really do it. And even really normal type people can get all worked up in a mob. Mob, They can. Um, I don't blame the police for shooting. I really don't. Um, because they're in fear, fear of their lives and they're probably outnumbered. There probably isn't 200 police and 20 protesters. Obviously, there looks like there's more than 20 in this photograph, but whether and how much of the scale of the thing in the photograph, I don't know. But yeah, if there's 20, if there's 200 police standing around, there's 20 protesters and the police draw their guns and shoot. Yeah, that's terrible. But that's probably not what happened. They were probably felt and afraid of their lives and weren't going to get beaten down. There's no reason a policeman needs to suffer being beaten down. Now, did they were disabled and other serious injuries from police clubbing? Did the police, after, you know, adrenaline's up, over, continued to, or overreacted at that point and beat up a bunch of people with their club? Maybe. But the mere fact that, um, yeah, 10 people died, but I'm guessing these police officers felt threatened for their lives and they were put out there, hey, don't let these people on our my factory. I own the factory, you know, the 
you know, the, the whoever the company, whether it's an individual who owns it or, you know, shareholders, don't let these people in my factory. And the, the police, yeah, they're supposed to keep order. And then these people attacked the police lines and the police fired back. No, I don't blame them for that with, with this situation here. I do not blame them for that. I'm not saying I'm happy that these people lost their lives. I guess we should keep them up in Flint. Let's... Where is this? Columbus, Ohio. Let's move these guys. I know just to headquarters. We'll move them to Detroit. And we'll maybe, what is Cincinnati? So Cincinnati might need a thing. Okay. Basic torpedo advance. Nice. Probably going to be a, a big nerfing oh good here we can start doing some of these long-range submarines we want long-range submarines tank destroyer advance the u.s needs long-range submarines more than the germans because this is going to be a pacific war not an atlantic war and that's big time i know i'm researching coastal just because i think i do have the leadership to do so um Let's lock this down. Let's. I'm just seeing this slowly going down. So what we're going to do? We're just going to do that. Uh, yeah, that I intended, but yeah. Cruiser screws and radar advance. Over here. Um. <laughs> Rudder advance. Why did I say radar? Because I'm not reading carefully here. Um, yeah, 1942 for an advance. But engines aren't. That isn't. So we'll do this because it takes longer to do. So let's get that going. Export of copper. Czechoslovakia. Okay. I'm going to take Greg's advice to heart here, but I'm going to look. Okay. We have a copper surplus of four, so I can afford, because I don't need all that extra supplies. It's useful, but okay. We will do this with Czechoslovakia. I don't know if that just ends up giving, but we are getting, hey, 1,200 money every month or something. Okay. Air Force HQs. Nice. We may revisit that soon, but not just yet. Let's get um, get some of these. Here. The capital ship engines. Yeah, I know I just shut this down. I shouldn't have just come over here. Okay. Um, Okay, those are goals events. I'm not used to doing ships because I don't really ignore them. Okay, here. Okay, so it's up here just grayed out. Okay, good. Well, I did notice when we were over here. Um, well, yeah, we could do some of these vertical ship protection. Well, that's our bulkhead layout. We'll do bulkhead layout. Well, ships are some of the best designs possible. Well, that didn't take. Okay, now that took. All right. Small warship fire control computer advance. Okay. that heavy forgings it's up here we'll stop that see i know where some of these are capital ship boilers um, okay we're going through there and What are we, maybe on carriers? 
Okay, first the fleet carriers class. That looks like a good one to do. And we have a little bit more, so we'll also do light carrier class improvements. Turbines. Why did I suspect that was coming? Be unlocked. Then, well, I guess we could do the light carriers. Brazil, okay, depth charges. That's here, I think. Yes. Before we really start putting more of these in production, I want to do think get these built up. And coastal submarine classes. Okay. Well, I think we're going to stop that for the moment. I just, maybe for ease of production, and, you know, yes, we're definitely looking at, you know, Pacific scale warfare, because what I'm envisioning, I hope, again, I hope you guys stick um, with this series long enough. And so that, because if, if it gets down to just 60 people clicking on the video and watching five minutes and going away, I'm going to have to end the series, um, whether I play it out on my own or not. But so hopefully people keep watching. And I know it will hopefully get better, you know, as the war happens. But um, so tell your friends, um, uh, go, you know, post everywhere to tell them to come and watch the series. It really would help. Um, what I'm hoping to do is to have a strong garrison to hold out here. You know, hold out here maybe. And I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating the AI not pushing me off. I may be wrong about that. But what I'm anticipating is um, Japanese submarines and whatever trying to interrupt my um, supply lines. So um, whether I can or I can't, I don't know. But I'm going to have a lot of... Um, submarines, whether possibly, you know, basing out of these ports, if not um, out here running around trying to cut off um, Japanese, you know, convoys, take them down. But if I, you know, which I'm going to unleash America's production, well, I'm going to put submarines, American submarines, which didn't. And there were some Americans, I don't know if American submarines operated here. There were some American submarines operating in the Mediterranean, I know. I don't know how many, not many, I don't think. Um, but we'll definitely be um, putting submarines in places like the Mediterranean, uh, off German coastal areas here, um, other other places. So some short range submarines that'll be cheap and easy to build will be, um, yeah, I really hope so too, ZZ. Um, again, um, hit that like button. Uh, and, you know, I know like ZZ and Greg and others are, Ringo are watching this live, but even if you click on the regular series, you can turn, you can click it, start it, click it on it, hit that like button and turn the audio off and minimize the screen so it just plays in the background while you do something else. That would be lovely um, because that would be a full view of, an, of a regular episode, but it wouldn't have to interrupt your day for the length of the episode and just have it playing in the background um, with the audio off really helps and hitting that like button really helps. So um, if you guys are interested in keeping this going and I hope uh, I'm having fun hopefully talking or I'm having fun talking about it. Um, and I will say the reason I have not played the America before and the reason I probably wouldn't be playing it for myself is, you know, let me sit around and think of how could possibly America win World War II? Well, I already know that because they did. So it, not that America is uninteresting to me, but as sort of a strategic gaming mind game, whether just you know, played in the mind or played on the, you know, on the map, it holds little interest to me in that sense, uh, because I know how America can win. Where Germany, well, how could, because I think there's possibilities of German victory. Um, talked about it in my other series, not going to go there. Go and watch some of the stuff if you want to get that. But 
there's possibilities. You know, how could they have won? What would have, you know, so it's not that I want them to win, but the how can that, that interests me a lot more. But if we're just talking about what America, you know, talking to you here, what America does in the war and all the interesting things, there's a lot of interesting things going on with him, with America in the war. And there are things that America could have probably done, you know, sometimes mistakes, sometimes, um, and I'm thinking more in the Pacific theater, some other strategies that might have shortened the war for America. Um, so yeah, there is a little bit of America could have done this or that a little better um, for sure. But um, so it's mostly interest in, in exploring and talking about what Okay, sales has expired. Fine, Huff Duff. That is here, and that is 1940. We'll do motor torpedo boats, Kennedy's boats. Like Marshall wanted to land in France in 42. That would have been silly, in my opinion. And that, I mean, um, Stalin wanted that to happen too. Um, Soviet Union tungsten. Uh, I don't think I'm going to go with the tungsten one. I, I hear you, Greg. Uh, I'm, I'm taking your advice to heart, but I'm... Well, well we're at surplus two. Because we don't need the heart attack. It just... And we really don't... I guess we really don't even need the the rare materials. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll trade with this. Oh, fighter pilot training is advanced. Very nice. Good. Um... Yeah, it just, America was not ready to, and, and, and that may seem good back in Washington, Marshall was back in Washington, but on the front lines, that would not have been a good idea. You could maybe have pushed something for 43, but, you know, I... Barrel tank is probably what's pushing us up here. Um, yeah, see, I was right. Fighter pilot training. So let me look down on fighter pilot training before. Okay, let's let's move to some of these other. We'll do that. I think you could assume, because Germany is, um, yes, pay our money, um, low popularity, lovely, um, is building up the, you know, the Atlantic walls as time is going on. I mean, they're um, building up the Atlantic wall just before the invasion starts um, still. So, yeah, going in in 43 or something would be a lot less organized opposition but I, I don't think you're going to, infantry unit commanding, I don't think you're going to have the sort of rampaging across the continent, you know, across France and whatever, that you had in 44, you would have had that in 43. Oh, God, I hate these things. These are things I remove from my game. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Well, Libidium. Okay, Colombia, no, we're not going to do it with Colombia. Italy is, is a great place to invade. It's also a terrible place to invade in, in many ways. But where it's great is one of the Axis partners of the, of the oh, well, I mean, of the major two Axis partners here in Europe. The third, of course, is um, Japan. I mean, there's minor Axis partners like Slovakia and Hungary and Romania and, and um, Croatia, you know, yes. But of the major ones, Italy here is the weaker one. And... It can be done in bite-sized pieces, you know, Sicily, or just, you know, here. Now, it's terrible to invade because it's mountainous and hard to, to run up along it, but if you're uh, 
um, a maritime nation, which America and Britain were, you can just, you know, bypass it and keep landing at different places. And so it, it gives you ways to invade that draws in a lot of um, enemy troops without allowing them to overwhelm you. Because if you, you land here, yeah, they were ex able to escape with a lot of German forces and some Italian, mostly German, um, out of Sicily. But there really wasn't a rail network and everything to set up to be able to re do the opposite. Germany, because there, there was not huge German forces sitting around here that were ready to flood in and, and counter, counter the invasion. They only had what they had down here. Where here, if you did the same thing, you, instead of, you do the same level of, of invasion that, in, that happened in Sicily, somewhere maybe out here, um, you have all the rail network to shift forces from Germany to this area here and yeah you know and or even because they're building up this defensive area first of course um even here even more so so you know i don't know that it would be a disaster you know but i don't i don't see it as being what you know it is in in june 44 and here it's it's in small bits and pieces that you can do Nav tactics advance. Well, we're just going to stop these extra ones here. There we go. We'll come back to things later on. Yes, you can have crude oil. And structure. Okay, grayed out. Fine. And that does allow us to do more. But, and these are useful, but not, I don't need them now. So we will do railroad network. Export of copper with who? Japan, no, not with Japan. Um, if I was playing a multiplayer game, one of the house rules, if we were to have this system or just the trading of these other resources, yeah, until historically, you don't get to turn down because, yeah, we know you're going to war, but they didn't know back then for sure. So I would... Aero engine. That is... Oh, that is this one here. Okay, so we're doing some of these to unlock those. Um, yeah, let's go for the mighty four-engine transport plane. And we'll build a bunch of those. Well, everyone, I want to thank you for getting this far. If, Like I say, uh, if you haven't already, please hit the like button, subscribe. I really am having fun talking about um, the U.S., the war. I mean, those are two different subjects, but the U.S. and its time period, I'm having fun exploring it. So I really want to continue this. So, guys, I really need your help. Even during the sort of boring building up periods, um, I know obviously only a, ten per, about only 10% of you get all the way through an episode. I see the stats, and that's cool. But those of you who really want to see this happen, please help me out with, um, you know, if you got to you, you share it on Twitter or some other social media, even if it's just the Google search things, it, it helps. Um, so share it watch it an extra time with the sound off whatever it really helps yes good night lawless i know it's getting late there i'm going to be ending the live stream as well now here but let's end the um, recorded episode here so thanks everyone see you next time